Welcome to Unruly Three, father of three unruly kids. I'm not ruly. So I'm a teacher, and I have a set of twins in my class. And for Valentine's Day, their family bought me this 3D printer. I'm not sure if the dad um, is sorry that I have to deal with his kids. I'm just kidding. His kids are amazing, so I really, really appreciate the gift. Um, my wife is a Harry Potter fan, so I was going to make her a new key holder. So this is my first time really doing a bigger project like this. And um, here at the end, you can see that these clips at the bottom kind of broke off, but I have a plan for that anyway. So here's what we do. I went ahead and put this onto a board. And I'm just kind of centering it. I want it to be a little bit more towards the top. So I'm just kind of trying to make a, a naturally organic line kind of going around this about even from the edge of this but not too not too close so it can kind of sit in there and I'm going to put some epoxy in there and then I'm going to take my router and I'm going to start routering out the inside of this and so the first bit I have in here um, so this this dust collection on this this is pretty slick um, so I have a Makita handheld router with, um, it's the battery, 18 volt battery. So going this way, everything was kind of compacted in here. But as I take it back the other way, you'll see that it just picks up all the, the dust in here. So I'm doing it from the inside out. I'm going to do half one side and then um, the other side. Now watch when I go back how clean these cuts are because now all the dust collection is getting in. Now I think my bit was a little bit loose here. You can see how it dug in, but that's going to be okay because I am going to cover the whole bottom with um, with epoxy. So I did put in a different bit, one that has was a little bit wider um, for hollowing out. Um, it's actually for hollowing out like bowls and some other things. So this one worked really good getting over here towards the edges. And I just took my time trying to get around as close as I could. So I've mentioned before, I have a 17 year old daughter and we've been trying to go back watching old movies from, you know, I, I say, I keep saying from the eighties, but it's really just old movies that I loved when I was a kid. And I, for some reason, she absolutely did not want to watch um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but I finally talked her into, I just started it. And she was sitting there with us, and she sat through the whole thing, and she thought it was really good. There were some times when she laughed out loud, which was kind of fun, you know, and she had a friend over, and they both thought it was pretty good. So, um, first Bueller's Day Off got a big thumbs up. I'm really happy about that. So that's one of the, the shows that I remember watching a ton when I was a kid. All right, and then the... Aloha Mara, which is open or whatever in um, for Harry Potter. It's going to go on the inside of here. So I did just quickly glue this down with some um, super glue before I started putting in the epoxy. My wife said that she wanted a maroon color because she's a Gryffindor. She claimed she's a Gryffindor. I should have done this in yellow to be Hufflepuff because she's all Hufflepuff. But... Um, yeah, I just started filling in around as much as I could for a little while. I tried not to get it onto the the actual plastic. But, um, yeah, that didn't work out so good. So then I just started getting it in all of it. And then I went back and just wiped it off with a rag. And then I take a toothpick, get it into the edges, and try to just make sure that all the levels are all about the same. And those mistakes that I made with the router, digging in a little bit, you don't even notice that they were that that had happened. And then I take a level because it's sitting. I want it to be flat so that it 
doesn't flow to one end while it's um, sitting here. And then I just take this rag, wipe off as much of the epoxy as I can. I didn't want it to dry on there, so I tried to get it as clean as I can before before it dried onto the um, the three D printed part. And then you take your heater, your little flame, and you go over it, and it will pop all the bubbles on the surface. All right, then I just want a router. I put a chamfer around the edge. And then did a little bit of sanding. This sits below the level of the, the sander so it doesn't hit the plastic part. But I did have some epoxy that got onto the, the walnut. And then take off my glasses so I could see. This is going to be the line that I'm just kind of judging to kind of put the, the hooks. And then center punch them, kind of measure them out as much as I can to get them spaced evenly. And then I'm going to drill these out. Just pre-drill. Then, really quick, I hit it with the sander again to get rid of all the jumps and the um, pencil marks. Spray it with water to pop the grain, let it dry. And I um, sanded it again. And then I'm going to finish it with the deft clear wood finish. Again, I put about four coats on. Um, I took a brown paper bag, crumpled it up, rubbed off the, the burrs, um, put on two more coats, rubbed off the burrs again, put on one top finishing coat, and um, came out nice and smooth. Then I just need to put in the hooks. This wood was super hard. So I did need to use like this center punch to help me twist these. And this one, the hard wood, just twisted it all up. So I just, you can see how twisted up it got. So just took it off, put a new one in there. All right, so there it is. So I used this Velcro on the back. I just put it onto the, the key holder itself, then put the other piece onto it. This Velcro is supposed to hold 50 pounds, so I'm sure that we're not gonna get that many keys. <clears throat> but at least now I have a place that I can consistently forget where I put my keys at. All right, and here it is mounted on the wall. She's already got it all full. Awesome, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.